Hello, my name is Jimmy Allison. I'm an Ableton Live certified trainer and I teach one-on-one -on -one lessons online and in Austin, Texas. This video is about audio effects racks. Racks are one of the most powerful features in Ableton Live. With racks, you can nest Ableton devices, macro map parameters, split signals, and many, many other tricks. This video will focus on creating a rack and macro mapping. To get started, we will create a basic high pass filter suite using auto filter. Load a default auto filter by dragging the auto filter folder into an audio track. Open the context menu on the title bar of the auto filter and select group. Now the auto filter is in an audio effects rack. Notice how the device is encapsulated within the rack. On the left side of the rack, you will see four buttons. The top one is the power button, which will turn off the rack and all the devices within it. The next one is the show hide macro controls button, which will open up and hide the macros. After that is the show hide chains button. This one is really cool. You can basically create infinite chains and do all kinds of parallel and kind of create wet dry and all kinds of really cool processing and effects. We'll get into the, more of this in other videos. And finally, the show hide devices, which will show or hide the devices loaded within the rack. Now let's get into some macro mapping. All you need to do is click the map button on the title bar and anything that is highlighted green will be macro mappable. For example, click the frequency knob to select it and then click the map button under the macro which you would like to use. I assign the frequency knob to macro one. Now click the map button to get out of map mode. Since we're making a high pass filter sweep, we need to switch the filter type to high pass mode by clicking on the high pass curve icon. Now when you turn the macro, you will do a high pass filter sweep. It was kind of boring, so let's spice it up. Let's assign the resonance to the knob. But instead of clicking map mode, all you actually need to do is open the context menu on the resonance knob and select map to frequency. Now both the resonance and the filter are assigned to the same macro. You can actually assign as many parameters as you want to the same macro knob. Since resonance is the amplitude at the cutoff frequency, we will be basically boosting the amplitude. So let's go ahead and just drop a limiter onto that. To bring a limiter into the rack, simply drag the limiter from the audio effects folder and drop it into the rack after the auto filter. You will notice a little line to help guide you as you hover over the spot you want it to drop. Be sure to drop the limiter inside the rack and not after the rack. Now when we adjust the auto filter, the resonance will increase, adding a lot of character to the filter suite. We actually may need to tone it down a bit because when we get to the highs, it gets pretty intense. Cool thing is we can actually adjust the min max values of the macros. All you need to do is click map, which opens the macro mapping browser. For the resonance, set the min value to 14% and bring down the max value to taste. That sounds pretty good. When you're happy, click the map button to get out of map. That sounded good. A nice, simple, high pass filter sweep with a little bit of character. Let's prep this rack for saving. First thing we want to do is rename the rack by opening the context menu on the title of the rack and select rename. I'm going to name mine filter high sweep. Also, go ahead and rename the macro to high sweep by opening the context menu and selecting rename on the macro as well. You can even color code the macros if you like. Open the context menu on the macro and pick a color. Then click show hide device to hide the device and get it ready for save. However you leave it when you save it is how it will show back up. I like to collapse down the devices just so I can see the macros because sometimes I don't always need to see everything when I load the effect. Now click the little disc get button that's on the top right corner of the rack. Your rack will be saved in the user library. You have one last chance to rename the rack and then hit return to save it. Okay, now let's make a low sweep. Click the show devices button. On the auto filter, click the low pass curve. Open the macro mapping browser by clicking the map button. In the map browser, open the context menu on the frequency and select invert range. Instant low sweep. I'm gonna go ahead and bring down the max resonance a little bit so we don't play havoc on the subs when we start cutting, cutting down to the lows. Perfect, now rename everything and save it. I like to call these little racks that we were making building blocks. 
because I can take a bunch of them, combine them into one effects rack, macro map the knobs, and create a multi effects rack really quickly. Let's bring the high sweep in, put it on the track after the low sweep. Select both racks and group them by opening the context menu on the title of one of the racks and clicking group. Now I've nested both racks into a parent rack. Open the macros on the parent rack and use the context menu to assign the child rack's macros to the parent rack's macros. Rename the rack filter sweeps and save it. Using this approach, you can make a bunch of one trick racks and quickly combine them into custom performance racks. Or while working on a track, you can just grab exactly what you need. That's about all I wanna get into in this video. I'll cover a lot more about racks in later videos. Thank you for watching and check out my other videos. I teach private one-on-one -on -one lessons over the internet and in Austin, Texas. Check out my website, austinabletotutor.com